Okay, today we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers with unlike denominators. And in order to do that, we are going to have to find the least common denominator of two or more fractions. And that will be the least common multiple of the denominators. The least common denominator provides another method for adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Before we do that, I just want to discuss the idea uh, of a fraction. You know, what exactly, you know, is a fraction? And a fraction is made up of two parts. We have the numerator part of the fraction, right? The numerator is the top half of the fraction. The denominator is the bottom part of the fraction. Those two parts make up a fraction. Now the denominator is its role is to name the fraction. The denominator names the fraction. And what do I mean by that? Well, the denominator, let's say if the denominator was fourths, right? If we have a denominator of fourths, it means your one whole is cut into four equivalent pieces, right? Let's say your denominator is eighths. Right, that same whole, instead of being cut into four equivalent pieces, right, is cut into eight equivalent pieces. Okay, if your denominator is a three, right, that same whole is cut into three equivalent pieces, right? So this would be fourths, this would be eighths, and this would be thirds. Right, the denominator names the fraction. The numerator tells you, let me write that. The numerator tells you how many. Right, numerator tells you how many pieces, right, of the whole you have. How many pieces of the whole? All right, so if I have a fraction, let's say, of three eighths, right, the numerator, it means that, well, let's talk about the denominator first. My whole is cut into eight pieces, right, eight pieces, and we have three of them. How many you have? All right. Okay, let's get moving here with some math. So if we want to add two fractions with unlike denominators, like 5 eighths and 1 sixth, first thing we need to understand that we need a common denominator because right now your fractions have different names. We have one fraction whose name is eighths. We have another fraction whose name is sixths, which means we have eight equivalent pieces, or our whole is divided into eight equivalent pieces here. Here my whole is divided into six equivalent pieces. In order to add and subtract fractions, we need the denominators to be the same, right? So that the fraction has the same name. So in order to do that, you know, we look for the least common multiple of the denominators. So I like to rewrite my fractions this way, 5 eighths and 1 sixth, and we're adding. We make equivalent fractions. So I make an equal sign, and I have to find my new denominator. Well, usually we do this mentally and I think of my multiples of 8 and my multiples of 6. 8 times 3 is 24, 6 times 4 is 24, so my new denominator is going to be 24. Once I have my new denominator using the least common multiple of 6 and 8 or the least common multiple of the denominators, we have to make an equivalent fraction. All right, in order to do that, I have to find the numerator. Whatever multiple I used to go from 8 to 24, right, which would be times 3, I have to use that same multiple times 3 to create my new numerator. 5 times 3 is 15. We've created equivalent fractions. 5 out of 8 is the same as 15 out of 24. They are equivalent. They are equal. Okay. I want to do the same thing with the 6 here. 
6 times 4 is 24. So I have to multiply my numerator by the same amount times 4 and I get a new equivalent fraction. We're saying that 4 out of 24 is the same, that's why we have an equal sign, as 1 6. But now we have equivalent fractions with the same denominator. And once we have the same denominator, we simply add or subtract the numerators. In this case, we're asked to add the numerators. So 15 24 plus 4 24 is going to give us 19 24. All right, 19 24 is a fraction in simplest form because the greatest common factor of the numerator and the denominator is going to be a 1. There's no common factor other than 1 for this numerator and denominator. That's how I know that fraction is in simplest form. All right, next one. Let's try a mixed number. Now, there's two different ways that we can add or subtract uh, fractions uh, or mixed numbers. All right, let's do one way first. The first way we can do this is to rewrite everything as an improper fraction. Okay, and I do that by multiplying the denominator times the whole number. 6 times 15 is what? 60 and 30 is 90 plus 5. That's going to give me 95 over 6 plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 over 2. So my first step is to change the mixed numbers to improper fractions. And then just like we did for the last problem, we have to find new common denominators. All right. So my new denominator, and let me rewrite this. All right. I like to do it vertically. So let me put my seven halves here. Seven halves. Right. I have to make new equivalent fractions with a new common denominator. Well, I have denominators of two and six. What's the least common multiple of two and six? All right. Well, six times... 1 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, so my new common denominator is going to be a 6. With our first fraction, because the denominator doesn't change, the numerator doesn't change. So that fraction is going to remain the same. But the second fraction here, right, the denominator goes from 2 to 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. In order to make an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply the numerator by that same factor of 3 to make an equivalent fraction. So 7 times 3 is going to be 21. Right? And I always like for my students to understand this. When we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same amount, I'm really multiplying by a 1 because 3 over 3 is 1. And when we multiply something by 1, we really don't change that number. All right? We're just rewriting it in a different form. But now I'm adding and my denominators are the same. So I add 95 and 21, so that's 95, 105, 115, 116, so that's 116 over 6. And then I have to write that, uh, change that back to a mixed number using a little long division. All right, let me change colors, do this in black so it stands out a little bit. 6 into 116. 6 times 1 is 6. I subtract, I get 5, bring down the 6. Uh, 6 times 9 is 54. I subtract, I get 2. My remainder of 2, I write as a fraction over my uh, divisor of 6. So I get 19 and 2 6. But the fraction 2 6, I can simplify even further because 2 and 6 have a common multiple of 2. So 19 and 2 6 would simplify to 19 and 1 third. All right? So that's one way to do that problem. The other way we can do it, and some people may like this a little better, is to group the whole numbers and the fractions, or group the whole numbers together, and then group the fractions together. So I'm going to rewrite it using that regrouping. So I have 15 plus 3, right? I'm going to group that together. And then I have, I'm going to have to add 5, 6 plus 1 half, right? And I'm grouping that together. I'll put that in parentheses as well. So I'm adding 15 and 3. I'm going to get a whole number of 18. 5, 6, and 1 half. I'm going to have to make equivalent fractions. My new denominator is going to be a 6, like we had 
the other way. This is times 3. So my numerator is times 3. That's going to give me 3, 6. 5, 6 doesn't change, so that stays the same. 5, 6, and 3, 6 uh, is going to give me 8, 6. 8, 6 simplifies to 1 and 2, 6. 1 and 2, 6 simplifies to 1 and 1 third. But I still have my 18 that I have to add to my 1 and 1 third. So I have 18 plus 1 and 1 third gives me the 19 and 1 third, right, that we got doing the problem the other way. Okay? You can choose whichever method you want to do. Okay? I think we're going to do the problems, uh, you know, this way because, or the first way, writing everything as an improper fraction, just because I think we need to practice with our long division. And I think sometimes when you do subtraction with mixed numbers, the borrowing and renaming can be a little confusing for students. So we're going to do everything, uh, write everything as an improper fraction. But I didn't want to neglect to tell you that there are other ways to do the problem. And I wanted to at least show you and demonstrate that there are other ways to do it. Okay, so let's do the next two problems here. Let me split the page a little bit. Okay, and let's do, first I want to rewrite as an improper fraction. Six times three is 18. 18 and five is 23, and that's gonna be over six. And I'm adding five times 12, or 12 times five is 60. 60 plus 11 is 71, that's over 12. We have to make new equivalent fractions with new common denominators. So my new denominator is going to be what? Well, I need the least common multiple of 6 and 12. And I know that that's going to be a 12. This second fraction doesn't change, or the denominator doesn't change, so the numerator doesn't change. But this first fraction, I go from 6 to 12 here, right? And that means that's times 2. So to make an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply my numerator by 2 as well. So 23 times 2 is going to give me 46. We're asked to add here. So I have to add 46 and 71. That's going to give me what? 7 and 7, 4 is 11. So 117 over 12. But then I have to simplify that fraction. And I, I'd accept an answer of 117 over 12 as long as that fraction is in simplest form. And what I mean is, as long as the least common uh, multiple, I'm sorry, as long as the greatest common factor of the numerator and the denominator is a 1, then I'd accept that answer because that is a fraction in simplest form. But usually you want to see uh, an improper fraction written as a mixed number, so we will do that. We have to divide 12 into 117. 12 doesn't go into 11, but 12 times, let's see, 12 times 10 is 120, so this has to be a 9. 9 times 12 is 108. I subtract, and when I subtract, I can't, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 17. Um, 17 minus 8 is 9, so I get 9 and 9 twelfths, because my remainder, I put over my divisor as a fraction, but 9 twelfths, I can simplify by dividing by 3 over 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 9 and 3 fourths would be our answer here. All right. Let's do the next one. 5 times 7 is 35. 35 and 3 is going to be 38. And that's over 5. Plus 3 times 13 is 39 and 2. That's 41 over 3. We have to make equivalent fractions with a new common denominator. The least common multiple of 5 and 3 would be 15. So we have to change each of these fractions. The first fraction, to go from 5 to 15, we had to multiply that denominator by 3. So the numerator, we multiply by 3. What's 3 times 38? Well, 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 8 is 24, so 90 and 24 is 114. This is times 5. So this is times 5. 
right? I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same amount. Multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same amount to make an equivalent fraction. So 41 times 5. Well, 40 times 5 is 200. 5 times 1 is 5, so that should be 205. We're adding. So 114 and 205, that's going to be what? 9, 1, and 3, and that's over 15. I want to simplify that fraction or rewrite it as a, um, as a mixed number. So I have to divide 15 into 319. 15 goes into 31 two times. That's 30. Subtract, I get 1. Bring down the 9. 15 goes into 19 one time. 1 times 15 is 15. I subtract, I get 4. My remainder, I write. Oh, let's do that again. That's a little sloppy. My remainder, 4 over 15. So I wind up with 21 and 4 fifteenths as my answer. All right, takes a little practice, and I know it's a lot of work, but this is something that uh, really is a fifth grade standard, uh, but we're just practicing, trying to get a little bit better. All right, let's try the next one. Gave myself a lot of space here. I, I like to write on the line, so let me give myself uh, some lines here, some line paper. Good. Okay, so let's do the next one. Let's rewrite these mixed numbers as improper fractions. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. So this is going to be 17 over 3, plus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. That's over 4. I have to make equivalent fractions. So I have to find the least common multiple of my denominators. The least common denominator or least common multiple for 3 and 4, I guess that's going to be 12. To make an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply that denominator by 4, so my numerator. I have to multiply by 4 as well. 17 times 4, that's 4 times 10 is 28. I'm sorry, 4 times 10 is 40. 7 times 4 is 28. That should be 68. And down here, this is times 3. So the numerator times 3. 9 times 3 is 27. We're adding once again, so I have to add 27 and 68. The denominator, remember, the denominator stays the same. The denominator does not change when we add fractions and the with the same denominator. So 8 and 7 is 15. Put down the 5, carry the 1. 1 and 6 is 7, and 2 is 9. So we have 95 over 12. All right. I want to rewrite that as a mixed number. So I divide 95 by 12. Uh, 8 times 12 is 96, so that's got to be 7 times 12, which is 84. Wind up with 11, right? 11 twelfths, right? And that is a fraction in simplest form, so 7 and 11 twelfths would be my sum. All right? Let's try subtracting mixed numbers, all right? And there are, of course, different ways to subtract, but we're going to change everything to improper fractions, all right? So, same process. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 and 3 is 19. So I have 19 over 4, but now I'm subtracting. 10 times 2 is 20, plus 3 is 23, and that's over 10. Right? We have to make equivalent fractions with a new common denominator. The least common multiple of 4 and 10, that would be 20. So we have to make new equivalent fractions with a... Uh, Denominators of 20, right? So that's times 2. So that's times 2. That should be 46. This is times 5 because 4 times 5 is 20, right? So that's times 5. That's going to be 50 and 45, which would be 95. But we're subtracting now. So now I have to subtract 95 and 46. So I'll do that over here 95 minus 46. Let's see, I have to borrow, rename, uh, 15, take away 6 is 9, 8 minus 4 is 4, so we wind up with 49, give myself a little bit more room, 49 over 20, but then I want to rewrite that as a mixed number, so 
I divide 20 into 49, that's going to go 2 times. That's 40. Subtracting at 9, my remainder of 9, I write over my divisor of 20. All right, so we'll practice a couple of these All right. in the form of word problems. All right, now this says to rename, but we're not going to rename. We're going to do the problem right the way uh, we've been doing them. I think it's a little bit more consistent for students just to choose you know one way to do these. All right, so. We have seven one uh, one line cup weighs seven and one eighth pounds. Another cup weighs five and three quarter pounds. How much does the heavier cup weigh? How much more does the heavier cup weigh? Right. We have to set up a subtraction problem. So that's going to be seven and one eighth, and we're taking away five and three fourths. Right. Just like we've done for the other problems. First, let's rewrite these as uh, mixed numbers or improper fractions. Sorry. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 1 is 57, so that's 57 over 8. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 3 is 23, over 4. Then we make new equivalent fractions with common denominators. Least common multiple of 8 and 4 is going to be 8. So because the denominator doesn't change, numerator doesn't change. But from 4 to 8, we had to multiply by 2. So if the denominator is multiplied by 2, the numerator is multiplied by 2 as well, that should be 46. We're subtracting. 57, take away 46, is 11. The denominator stays the same, 8. And when I divide 8 into 11, that goes one time with 3 left over. Right, so 1 and 3 eighths would be my answer there. All right, we continue. A picture frame is one and three quarter feet wide and three and five six feet long. How much longer is the picture frame than it is wide? All right. Let's see. That's going to be a subtraction problem as well. So if I'm going to write it this way. Three and five six minus one and three fourths. We have to rewrite everything as improper fractions. Six times three is 18. 18 and 5 is 23, that's over 6. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, that's over 4. Once we've written everything as improper fractions, we then have to rewrite new equivalent fractions with a common denominator. What's the least common multiple of 6 and 4? That's going to be 12. So to make an equivalent fraction, the denominator changed from 6 to 12, so it had to be multiplied by 2. To make an equivalent fraction, we have to multiply the numerator by that same factor because we're really multiplying by a 1 because 2 over 2 is 1. 23 times 2 is 46. Over here, this is times 3. So we multiply that numerator times 3. It's going to be 21. We're subtracting. 6 minus 1 is 5, 4 minus 2 is 2, and that's over 12. I want to rewrite that as a mixed number, so we divide 12 into 25. 12 goes into 25 two times. 2 times 12 is 24, subtracting at 1. My remainder of 1, I put over my divisor of 12, and 1 twelfth is a fraction in simplest form. All right, so we're going to end it there. All right, those are a few examples of the addition of uh, fraction and mix, mixed numbers and subtraction of uh, uh, fractions as well. All right, and uh, you know, hopefully that's going to be helpful.